Hey guys, welcome back, it's Beta. Today I'm gonna to talk to you guys about this little box. It's a box that promises us to be able to turn in TV with an HDMI port into a fully functional PC. It's the Intel Compute Stick. So without further ado, let's check it out. Here we have the actual box. It says the Intel Compute Stick. And the beauty of this essentially is that it's a computer, an entire PC, fit into something that's a little bit bigger than a thumb drive, but still way smaller than what you would think a PC looks like, let alone a full-blown PC running Windows 8.1, including Bing, which obviously is the built-in search engine. But overall, the actual hardware, well, let's look at it again. You're getting basically an entire stick, and the interface on it at this point, oh, let's open it up here, is an HDMI connector. That's how you get everything, audio, video, everything out of this directly into the TV. Uh, we'll look on the basically left side to the actual device. We have a power button, a little vent port, a micro USB connector. This is where we'll be able to charge it. A full-size USB plug. This is where you'll be able to plug in your either USB drive, uh, plug in a standard either dongle for a keyboard and mouse. Your in main interface is going to be here. You can even connect the hub depending on what you need to do. Um, and on the other side here, opposite, again, another vent and a micro SD card uh, slot where you're able to expand more memory on it. Built into this unit, there's only 32 gigs of RAM, uh, 32 gigs of, uh, of hard drive space. It's the SSD, and then it has two gigs of RAM built in. It's a, uh, we'll get into the specs in a second. But other than that, on the back, we just have some regulatory information. Again, on the front, a couple of vents and an LED light to be able to give us indication there if it's running or not. And then, of course, we have a little loop, kind of for security purposes. You can basically tie this down. On the top, nothing, mostly shiny, just kind of material. And we're going to put this on the side for a second. See what else comes in the box. Before we go away, um, again, this goes in and tells us we're running Windows 8.1. It's a quad-core um, Atom processor, an Intel Atom processor, 8.1 Windows, 32 gig of storage, 2 gigs of RAM, Wi-Fi, B, G, and N, Bluetooth 4, and then obviously the cafe is the antivirus that's built in, and of course it's an Intel inside. We'll leave that here for a second. Uh, this is, I'm assuming, the uh, yeah, this is the one-year subscription to McAfee. We'll go ahead and put that on the side as well. Uh, manual instruction, a little bit more specific, obviously, to installing and getting this set up. We have an extension cable for the HDMI connector. That makes sense, obviously, since we don't, not every time you're able to actually plug in something that's straight into it, and it's pretty flexible. Uh, micro USB cable, that's going to be our power cord. And sure enough, here's our brick has standard, well, I guess we still need the pieces from here. So they provide us with an international set of plugs, which is really nice. And we'll just go ahead and pick the US. I assume it was the other way, but I guess this way. You can't really see it, it's very small, but it's a five volt, a two amp charger. So it's a two amp charging uh, brick, uh, and then plugs in the USB cable that we got here, and we'll be able to set it up. So. I'll go ahead and set it up. I'm going to connect it to this monitor that's uh, on my desk and then I'll get back to you guys. So we switched over to the actual desktop now. I've already connected the computer directly via HDMI to the monitor uh, and I'm going to go ahead and connect it to using this keyboard that I have. It's a, it's a wireless keyboard, one of the older ones that I had, but it does require to have actually an IR blaster connected to your computer. So this will be a nice little challenge to see how that works. It is a Windows certified keyboard that came originally when Windows Media Center used to be around, but that's beside the point. Uh, the other thing we have here is our power. I put everything back in the box, whatever we don't need here, so we're good. So we're going to go ahead and fire it up for the first time. And turning it on, it basically just press the power button on it. Sure enough, it's turning on Intel Compute Stick. See how that works. I'll make sure our keyboard is on. Yep, we have power. So it's supposed to come up with Windows 8.1. So the only thing we needed to do is basically boot it up and log in. Okay. Well, let's see how this is going to work. First boot up of any Windows 8.1 PC will always be a little bit longer. This, uh, I can't really judge on the fact that if it's longer or shorter than what a normal PC would be. Uh, mostly because we're running an Intel Atom processor, so the processing speed there is not going to be, you know, what you would expect from a quad-core processor. So you say quad-core, you're thinking, oh, speed, but it, there is different flavors of quad-core. So this is uh, definitely a challenge, but again, 
uh, this more than likely will, will be what you find in a lot of those mobile uh, tablets, like the little netbooks. So those are the same type of CPUs that you're looking for. Uh, type of comparison as far as performance. We're not looking for a desktop PC replacement or even laptop. Uh, but it should be pretty smooth as far as running what we need it to do. Uh, you know, going to YouTube, playing some videos, getting some just normal multitasking of what 8.1 is really about. And supposedly once Windows 10 comes out, this is going to be compatible with Windows 10 as well. So we'll be able to upgrade to that right away. Um, saying almost ready. Don't turn off the PC. And again, as I mentioned before, I went ahead and switched my keyboard. I went directly for a keyboard and mouse that I have for my PC, uh, just for speed because of the fact that the, uh, I guess I'm not used to using a wireless mouse uh, with a little knob on it. So we'll have to get into that. And here's our mouse and we're basically in. So let's go ahead and open up Windows 8.1 here. Good. Logged in my profile. It did import all my settings as far as the way I like to have my, uh, my profile here. We'll go back home. We'll go back to the desktop. Uh, let's just, yes, of course we can always do that. And we can always do split screen. Of course it does that as well. So let's go here and I'm good. This is, and this will be the first and only time I will ever actually use Internet Explorer on this PC because I'm going to log in and download Chrome. So we're going to go to, into our PC. So far, it looks like opening and doing things are pretty quick. Uh, I did put in my mem one of my uh, memory sticks in there directly the, uh, into the this system just to kind of see how it works. So I'm just going to look at photo. And it does look like it actually works pretty good. And then we're going to have your application run. We're going to say run. Uh, we'll close this. Well, actually, let's just go look at the PC real quick. So we have music folders, videos, uh, nothing in here. No default pictures. Yes, please. The sound is running directly from my monitor into my speakers. That's how I normally use uh, my Amazon Fire TV. So overall, from the setup, from the turn on and getting it running, it's actually pretty good. It updated the time, the date. Um, I have volume control, which I normally expect, uh, little running applications, Bluetooth is turned on, and then we have Intel HD graphics, which helps us kind of configure it. Let's see the resolution that we're able to go here. So we'll go pro graphic properties. This is just the Intel uh, dashboard for the video, video configuration. Since we're running an Intel based uh, processor and unit, it's basically configured to be the onboard video card. So the resolution right now I'm on 1920 by 1080p and lo and behold, that is the actual highest resolution I'm able to go to on this uh, on this unit. So it will only go to 1080p. It will not match my screen's resolution, which is higher. Uh, but that again is perfectly fine. I'm able to see everything, and everything is good. The YouTube and yeah, huh? let's see how the browsing speed is. It's not bad. It's decent speed-wise. Uh, it goes. It kind of works. Pretty good. Uh, let's go ahead and open up one of uh, XDA's videos. Hey, today I'm going to review for you the Google Glass Explorer Edition hardware. I've had the hardware. So it goes up to 720p, and let's go bump it up to 1080p. Since the maximum resolution on this display is 1080p, we can't go any higher than that. We're just going ahead and mute the sound, and we'll go full screen. And let's see, did we switch? Yep, we're running on 1080p, the quality, and it's actually bumping at this point. So I'm going to go out here and we're going to try to do multitasking. Obviously, that'll be the, uh, one of the last few things I'll be able to do here. My video is still running in the background. I'll just turn on the volume to get it here. Uh, we'll go ahead and open up two panels. So we'll get this working from Google. And if you look at it, essentially, there's an insert here for the actual glass unit for the eye. So video running in the, in the panel on this side, and I'm going to go here to XDA, have it search. So right off the bat, I, I'm noticing, so it's not running as smooth as I would like it to be. I'm so noticing a little bit of hiccups here and there. Could be also because none of the updates have been installed. A lot of the, you know, the, the operating system is right out of the box. And again, yes, my latest video just came up here. So I'll click that and it'll open it up on this slide. So I'm able to run two things at the same time. Uh, it should be no problem running just like regular word processing. It does not come with any, I think, let's see. 
No, so it doesn't come with any Word or Office suite on it. So from where you guys saw, the actual installation of setting up the unit, it's not really that complicated. You need to have it connected to a TV that has an HDMI. The audio and video is handled by the HDMI and everything else is really handled directly from the actual computer or the compute stick. Um, I interfaced it directly with my keyboard. I did use the wireless keyboard with an IR blaster. So this is one of the older technology keyboards that I've had. Uh, but it was the only wireless one that I had that I was able to use. So that if I have this connected to a big TV and I'm standing, you know, 10 to 15 feet or even right in front of it, uh, I still have the ability of using the keyboard. And I think this is more functional in that setting. Um, for, for my PC, as you guys saw with the setting up, I did switch over to my regular keyboard and mouse that I normally use with my desktop PC. Um, and it worked pretty well. Uh, the keyboard and mouse responded pretty quick. Uh, I think there's a few things that I need to go through. Obviously, make sure all the updates are installed correctly, make sure all the things are set up correctly under the system. Uh, but initial impressions of what it looks like, it looks extremely promising. Uh, for what it is, for about $150 just out the box with Windows 8.1, it's running and it's really performing quite well because think of it in the sense of you're going to be taking this with you. You go to a hotel room, you, you plug this into a TV, and suddenly you have a full-size, fully functional keyboard uh, and PC. And uh, that's something that you normally can't do. You don't have to lug around your little netbook anymore. Everything is really pretty much set for you there. Of course, it doesn't really replace the netbook since technically that's more mobile and you can use it everywhere else. Uh, but the intention of this and the market for this is great for uh, limitation of space. If you want to just put the, maybe a PC or an introductory PC for somebody and you just have the monitor or the TV and it's HDMI enabled, uh, you just basically set up a PC entirely running behind it. Uh, and it makes it more like all those all in one PCs kind of thing. Uh, very, very easy and very inexpensive to set up. Um, I think obviously since there's only one USB port, a hub would be recommended and required. Uh, and once you get those things set up, I think you'll be perfectly fine. Uh, you can expand the memory. As you guys saw, I did expand the memory on my device and I was able to actually access those images. Uh, I actually only have a 16 gig card there, but you can, I'm sure you can go higher than that. 32 gigs of built-in storage. And just to kind of verify right out of the box, we haven't installed anything. Uh, we have 18.4 gigs uh, free out of 21.9. So there's two partitions built in. One of them is, uh, well, the second one on the right is the SD card, but the main partition out of the 32 gigs, we only had 21, that is interesting, 18.4 free. Uh, but I didn't read it as, to, uh, as uh, 32 gigs. Actually, I'm sure there's certain partitions left for the restore, the recovery of Windows and all of that. Again, not a bad start, but you can definitely expand on it. As usual, like and subscribe to this, my channel and I'm going to do a little bit more testing and I should be giving you guys an update to this in about a week or so as to how it's been holding up. Hope you guys like this. Thank you.